Shazam! Okay, now I have your attention. And since I was expecting to do this in a couple of days or two, but given how I finished some of my schoolwork a bit earlier than I was expecting to, and you now I decided to go see an early screening of Shazam, which just came up earlier this evening. And the latest film in the Walter DC rebrand of their often and, and twisty and turny shared dramatic universe universe which sees a title character played by Zachary Levi as hero form as well as as Asher Angel or as the human form of Billy Batson who is a a troubled young man who reluctantly he agrees to be he in a foster home alongside I'd hey someone else named Freddy, played by Zach Dylan Grazer. Her as he not only learns to hone to master his new powers, but also clashes with the mad scientist Dr. Savannah. Uh, uh played by Mark Mark Strong. So if this premise sounds totally bonkers based on how I'm talking about it, then you'd be absolutely right. Because this is not another Green Lantern case where they're not really sure how to who do something this crazy. Because rather than try and shy away from the mainly bonkers news of source material, they have wholeheartedly embraced it, I mean, in a sense. They depict it, this movie, with the same kind of golly gee whiz idealism that uh, and the character had when he was introduced in Golden Age of Comics as well as the 1940s film serials ahead of time. He's also had numerous other appearances on TV he, he, since his creation. And But this is a first big budget feature length film. Um, and they've been trying to get this one made for a very long time. Um, and... Definitely there's also a significant departure from the dark and edgy he, he approach that DC's films normally been known for. Or since if anything, it's very, very much similar to what Marvel's been doing I mean, for the longest time, where they able to take the I mean the absurd sports material and make it work on film. Since in a nutshell, there are Scenes that's where that range and for heroes or anything like like break a convenience store robbery, a to a, this big battle in the middle of Philadelphia, uh, uh where um, here are these stone um, beasts are definitely flying around. I mean, I'm not going to get too spoilery for obvious reasons. I mean, and just. Go see the movie, you know what I'm talking about, I mean, I have been, even though, oh, I'm, they just made another policy change, it means I can't really stream anymore on mobile, at least not currently, hey, the movie, hey, thankfully shows how, how, it's kind of like that, like the Tom Hanks from Big, if it was a superhero movie, it definitely has a kind of gleeful wish fulfillment, Moments where at one moment you're shooting viral videos, another that you're playing Mortal Kombat, guzzling Dr. Pepper, I mean, <laughs> oh yes, it's definitely a very nice way to kill 2 hours and 12 minutes, I mean, in that sense, to have a lot of, of the right crew members behind this movie, and I think Definitely, they did a good job with, especially casting like the child actors of Billy and Freddy. I mean, since I have not seen the those TV shows they were on, but I also I think they're good fits the role. I mean, that's and how Billy himself is portrayed. It depends on the writer, hater, and also the version of the version. But typically, he's one on that you could. Could see in he 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 doing all this stuff, man. Like how it's very it's a very effective origin story of him trying to master his powers and learn to accept his new family. I mean, since 
even though it's PG-13 and there are some admittedly dark scenes here and there, I mean, I definitely agree with the statement that it is kind of like that thing, kind of like Jurassic Park. I mean, even if it's, even if it's meant for age 13 and up, of course someone younger than that would find it cool. I mean, like a 12-year-old could figure that out, I mean. So, and as I said before, if this is the future of DC on film, then I'm honestly all for it because... For every one like Batman and Superman that can often be darker, a bit more serious, sometimes just want to see he he a guy I just to use his powers powers or just to have fun and and basically to who enjoy a unwittingly a crashing a bus and then saving it. I mean, that's definitely not spoilers to the news I've seen in the trailers, I mean, and a lot of TV spots as well, I mean. <laughs> okay. So, and I think, much like Marvel, this, there are French that's definitely wide enough range of material to support more than one style, like how it kind of can be, like, dark like Batman, and inspiration like Wonder Woman, also goofy and bonkers like Aquaman, and also kind of, kind of spooky like the Joker movie that's coming out later this year as well. I mean, I'll probably address that when I have, when I have all have my thoughts collected on that. But for now, if this whole throw in the wall and see what sticks thing is the future of DC, then I'm honestly all for it. I mean, my final rating is a strong three and a half stars out of four, so. Definitely gonna do this something I've been meaning to do for a, for a long time to cut and then to try our talk. <laughs> okay, so I'm not gonna do this in any particular order, order. So I'm just gonna come right out and say all the previews I've seen and kind of give you my brief thoughts on them. Some of them I've just before, others, others I might not have. So let's here we go. Avengers Endgame, obviously, later this month, I'm definitely going to be trying to get into, especially since apparently a three of the websites taking pre-order tickets for it or have actually gotten so much traffic that the servers crashed. I mean, like, I mean, the virtual queue that you represents the line you would stand in for real actually froze due to the high demand. I mean, I guess that's another thing that Thanos snap affected, maybe. Maybe, but still, it's an indicator that even though the the other ads are not spoiling too much, given how it's finale, not only of the other Avengers films, but also the whole level of narrative that we had up to up to this point, it's basically selling itself, man. I don't know what I mean. Even Holland, the guy who's playing the Spider-Man, wasn't even getting the script because of his tone of spoiling things like Amp Less and Forest, man. Okay, and so, okay, Pokemon Detective Pikachu, obviously looking forward to that. I mean, I think, I'm definitely enjoying how they've built the world, and I certainly hope that the film does well enough to actually justify this potential cinematic universe that they want to do. I mean, who since, since, and now that I finally... I got my 3DS upgrade. I'm probably gonna be playing, playing the, and doing another playthrough of the game as soon as I figure out how to get used to it. Since, and even though they do take some liberties with it, it does for us roughly seem to follow that we saw in the same plot where a young man comes to Rhyme City and finds an unlikely partner and the title character to find his missing father, as well as unravel greater conspiracy that could threaten, threaten the whole Pokemon world. Also, and I actually kind of like it how they're not trying to who dive right into the main games or into anime right away. They have expressed interest in doing so, should the film be a hit. I mean, there are some nods here and there, obviously, but I'm glad they're not trying to basically cram the last 22 years of lore and, or a thousand or so episodes of TV into one movie. I mean, that's a movie that's only now 44 minutes long, I mean. And also, I think I'm really more sold on the cage, cage battle handles than I was in the murder ball and I lead a 
doesn't really concern me too much right now. Now, so let's move on. Aladdin. And even though the footage of Wolf's Machine at CinemaCon has guards mixed reactions, I'm definitely going to keep an open mind the best I can as a big fan of the original movie. Probably going to look at that as a one camp gets close to coming out. I mean, I mean, while I think the casting overall and the visuals are pretty trippy, I mean, and the casting is solid, I mean, what's actually intriguing the most about the production is Guy Ritchie at the helm, since, I mean, I know he's done other... These kind of big action gangster movies like Snatch and Lost of Two Smoking Barrels, but it should be interesting to see what he could do with a family film. I'm also liking the new Jasmine, played by Naomi Scott, who, again, who was previously Kimberly in the new Power Rangers. Like, one reimagined version of my 90s crushes is being played by another reimagined version of one of my 90s crushes. Imagine that, man. I mean, Godzilla King of the Monsters. I'm probably going to be doing some other, other material related to that before that comes out in May. Hey, one of which I'm looking forward to addressing, the other, not so much. In fact, I've been willing to bury the hatch on that for a long time, and you'll know why when the time comes. And, okay. And so, Frozen 2, who, I mean... As someone who actually was able to approach, approach the first movie as well as all the other material to a different perspective than any others, I'm actually definitely actually kind of, kind of interested in it since I liked how the first one was style, similar style and tone to the earlier Renaissance era movies. I mean, the one even had some of the same writers and animators working on it, especially with the songs, man. And also, it was quite big in Japan as well, which explains the inclusion of Aaron Dillon Kingdom Hearts 3. Me as well. And on that note, I'm interested to see what they will do with it. I mean, that's right. Also, walking on water. Other obvious symbolism is obvious. Last, in my opinion, least, Men of the National. I am trying my best to remain optimistic, but there are just some times where I just have to have to say that I'm going to pass on this one. I mean, while I did have had have did not have any objection to reboot on paper, I was kinda of hoping to do something dark like the other cons was not quite as dark as that. Or even like that TV show I used to watch when I was younger. Yes, there was a TV show, look it up. The results were not what I was hoping for. I mean, even before some unpleasantness regarding Nissan, and which I don't really care about, to be honest. Honest man. Most of all, I mean, it wouldn't be the first time someone's done some said something like that off camera either. Either, I just feel like the tone seeing and visuals seem kind of off. I get more. I mean, maybe it work it will work fine for Fast and Furious or even Kingsman, but not really for Men in Black. I mean, I mean, it's just kind of the same problem that the sequels had compared to the first. I mean, to some extent, I mean. I mean, I do think that Tessa Thompson and Chris Hemsworth work well together. If you want proof of that, go watch all the Ragnarok again. I'm just very skeptical about how this will do. I mean, it's just something I'm probably going to wait for the DVD for it to come on TV or something like that. Unless I hear more about it. Because it's also coming out in between Toy Story 4 and Dark Phoenix, as well as Secret Life of Pets 2. All three of those are more interested in, to be honest. But, anyway. That's all I have to say hey for now. Oh, tell me what you think about this movie in the comments, you plan on seeing it, and I will talk to you all later. <laughs>